15 Things You Didn't Know About Columbia Pictures Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hey there, Aluxers, and welcome to another exciting original video presented by Alux.com. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. Today we're going to talk about the brand popularly known as Columbia Pictures, or fully known as Columbia Pictures Industries Inc. This leading film studio is a member of the big six major American studios, and is also part of Sony Pictures Motion Picture Group. Sony Pictures Motion Group, as the name indicates, is a subsidiary of Sony, a Japanese conglomerate. Columbia Pictures launched on June 19, 1918, and was founded by two brothers, Harry Cohn and Jack Cohn, in partnership with Joe Brand. The original name was CBC Sales Film Corporation, CBC being short for Cohn Brand Cohn. The name Columbia Pictures caught on in 1924 and originates from the word Columbia, and the logo represents a national personification of the states. Early on, it was primarily a minor group in Hollywood and began to see growth in the late years of the 1920s, once they joined forces with the famous Frank Capra, a director. They also signed a few major stars that helped to further the brand's image. Today, Columbia Pictures has become the world's fifth largest major film studio and has given the world iconic films such as Ghostbusters, Shawshank Redemption, and Groundhog Day. Their story of persistence through all major ups and downs is indeed remarkable. So, let's take a closer look now at this historical company with the 15 things you didn't know about Columbia Pictures. Number 1. In the 1920s, Columbia had the worst reputation amongst the eight top studios. Out of the eight studios in Hollywood that commanded the movie business, Columbia Pictures, back in the 1920s, had the worst reputation and the smallest budgets. There wasn't much hope for it and prominent members of the industry simply chose to expect nothing from the studio. The company struggled at the start, but it did survive unexpectedly. It literally rose from the ashes of poverty to become a real competitor amongst the giants. Columbia Pictures is one of the rare gems that could make it out of Poverty Row and make it into the world of highly competitive, high-tiered film production and distribution. Number 2. Columbia Borrowed Stars From Other Studios Columbia did not manage their own stars due to the extreme budgeting, though they borrowed stars from other studios regularly. At MGM, Columbia was called Siberia, as the studio would use the loan out to Columbia as a way to push them. Once Gene Arthur and Anne Southern signed on, they went on to become famous celebrities and helped to raise the brand name overall. Number 3. CBC was infamously known as Corned Beef and Cabbage When it was launched, CBC was initially a distributor of film shorts. Before long, however, they wanted to delve into feature-length movies, but no one took them seriously, and they were commonly referred to as corned beef and cabbage. They were anxious to change the company's reputation, and hence the new name was introduced, Columbia Pictures. They were able to do this when they purchased a property in Los Angeles, Poverty Row, formerly owned by Sunset Gower Studios. Number 4. Columbia Pictures won seven Oscars at the Academy Awards in 1935. Columbia Pictures fought hard to gain its moment of glory, and for the Academy Awards in the year of 1935, they bagged not one, but seven Oscars. Most notably Best Picture, for Frank Capra's It Happened One Night. After this, the studio went from its humble Poverty Row origins earning its spot at the top, majorly attributed to the director Frank Capra, who was with Columbia Pictures from the years 1927 through to 1939, and was a famous name in both the industry and amongst the viewing audience. Number 5. Spider-Man 3 was the most expensive movie from the Columbia Pictures house. Spider-Man 3, released in 2007, was the most expensive movie released by Columbia Pictures. Estimated at $291 million, the movie caught the eye of kids and adults alike and brought the Spider-Man character to life for comic fans. Number 6. Frank Capra and Harry Cohn Never Saw Eye to Eye In fact, Frank Capra referred to Harry Cohn as his crudeness, and even went to the extent of forcing his contract with the studio to be cancelled after a few complaints were lodged against Harry Cohn. After almost filing a lawsuit against Columbia, Frank even sought out to start his own independent company in the year 1936. They reconciled and sorted out their differences, however, and continued to work together. 
Number 7. Harry Cohn was tyrannical in nature and wanted to control everything. Harry Cohn was not a favorite amongst the staff. He was often called various foul names and threw tantrums no matter who was around him. Those who worked around him learned to avoid him when he seemed to be in one of his moods. However, Columbia Pictures did thrive under his leadership, and most of the members stayed on for several years. Number 8. Columbia Pictures was hacked for making a movie about Kim Jong-un. In 2014, the employees at the studio found images of grinning red skulls on their computer screens, indicating they were hacked by hashtag GOP, or Guardians of Peace. An enormous amount of data was stolen, up to 100 terabytes. Company hard drives were wiped clean, and a lot of sensitive documents were leaked onto the internet. The studio was forced to pull the movie from the theaters after the incident. If you're wondering what it was about, it was a comedy flick centering around two journalists who were tasked with killing the North Korean ruler Kim Jong-un. Controversial? Sure, you could definitely say that. Number 9. Rita Hayworth dominated the face of Columbia Pictures for a good period of time. Columbia Pictures also gained recognition because of their affiliation with Rita Hayworth, who was famous as the Love Goddess. Columbia did not own many superstars, though Rita was different. Her fame kicked in during her years at Columbia, where she made 32 pictures in all. She was well respected and was known to be one of the only people that Harry Cohn would pay heed to. At one point, Columbia Pictures was also referred to as Rita's Studio. Number 10. Columbia Pictures finally moved to the old site of the MGM Studios in 1990. In 1990, Columbia moved to the Burbank Studios, the site of the old MGM Studios, the place where Harry coveted most. Columbia Pictures played a major role in the golden age of Hollywood. The studio's pictures and television shows prove that Columbia is an enduring part of American lore, and the legacy remains of rich stories of those who came and went. This would have marked a win to the late Harry Cohn, as he had big dreams for the company and wanted to be a part of the other major studios in the industry. Number 11. Columbia branched out into the small screen under a label, Screen Gems. Since owning a television at home became a common thing, the studio system dropped and people weren't interested in spending money going to the cinema very much, simply because they could get free entertainment in the comfort of their own homes. In the year 1948, Jack's son, Ralph Cohn, took over as president of Screen Gems, Inc. Screen Gems focused entirely on commercials and not films in the early years. Once television sets became more widespread, they couldn't avoid it anymore, and went on to show the movies filmed by Columbia Movies on TV, usually the insanely popular B Pictures. Screen Gems further went on to become the largest channel distributor of films on the small screen. Number 12. Columbia Pictures teamed up with Wizard World to host a contest inviting new stories to be made into a movie. Ever fancy writing a famous Hollywood fiction movie? Columbia Pictures has just partnered with Wizard World to launch a contest inviting participants to submit stories that could be presented as pitches for the Wizard World Comic Con 2008 in Portland. Wizard World has an agenda to further its lead role in the pop culture industry, and this collaboration is in the spirit of furthering a broad-based relationship with Columbia. Number 13. Columbia's main earnings and fame came from their B-movies. The studios couldn't afford to produce only A movies with famous stars, and Columbia was no different. Their main bread and butter was always the B films and shorts, and the most popular one being The Three Stooges. Cheap always remained the operative word, and only 1 in 10 of Columbia's movies ever cost more than $500,000. Most averaged out around $250,000. Number 14. The logo strongly resembles Lady Liberty and is meant to symbolize national pride. Columbia's logo, referred to as the Lady with the Torch, is the ultimate representation of America. It's no coincidence that the symbol looks much like Lady Liberty, one of America's greatest symbols. The logo is symbolic of American pride, and going to the movies showed national unity, more so in the times of the Second World War. Columbia Pictures basked in its greatest success in the times when national pride was at its peak, and the logo reinforced that feeling. Number 15. Columbia Pictures' success can be attributed to Harry Cohn's dictatorship. 
If not for Harry Cohn's almost dictator-like leadership, Columbia Pictures would not have been where it is today, and the contributions made by this label to Hollywood and the entertainment industry have been quintessential to the rise of what is now the pop culture movies. They proved that a young company that was previously known as Corned Beef and Cabbage, with roots in Poverty Row, can indeed stand out and revolutionize the industry. So, now that you've learned some more about Columbia Pictures, we're curious to know, Aluxers, which is your favorite Columbia Pictures movie? Let us know in the comments below. Still here? As always, here's a bonus fact just for you. Number 16. The model on the Columbia logo is unknown to this day. The model on the logo of Columbia has actually never been identified. The logo was conceptualized in 1924 and has undergone multiple variations to evolve to where it is today, and multiple models have claimed to pose as the original lady in all of these years. Columbia Pictures themselves, though, say they have no records to verify any of those claims. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxer. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss a video. If you want more, we handpicked these videos you might enjoy, or head over to alux.com for the best in fine living content on the planet. Be a part of the largest community of luxury enthusiasts in the world and tell your story.